Hi there. In this video, I will talk about the pandas function, which is two underscore date time. So what it does is basically whatever argument that you give, it converts into a date time. As you can see from the pandas da documentation that it has a lot of parameters as well as it has given you the examples. So what I have done is I have just picked up some important arguments and with the help of examples, I'm trying to show you how it can be useful. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to import the pandas library by using this sentence import pandas as pd. After that, here are some of the dummy dates that I have uh, taken. So if you see the format of these dates are different. So first is uh, year is first, then the month, then the day. And then here in this case, different format for the third parameter, again, different format, different one. So, so on and so forth. So if I go ahead and execute this, nothing will happen, but it will just print the same dates, which we have taken. And this may happen from the data source that uh, you are taking, or let's say if you are receiving the files from multiple data sources, then date formats may be different. So what we need to do is, we just need to use the function to underscore date time and pass this argument and pass the argument as date object, this particular one that we just created. And once you do that, it will convert all of these dates into a standard format. So if I go ahead and execute this, so it has given us an error. So PD is not defined because I have not executed this one. So let me give execute that and now re-execute this piece. So now the dates have been converted into a proper format. If you see 2015-0307, 2015-0307, and here in this case 2017 is there. So 2017-0307. That means first the year, then the month, then the day. That's the format it has taken and converted all of these different format into a consistent format. So that's how you can see pretty simple it is to convert various formats into one single format. Now let's look at the second example, which is related to a date time. So here with the date, you have the time information. But in the second example, the time information is a bit different. It's in 24 hours format. And in this case, it is PM as you can see, but it is mentioned as 2.30. So it is in 12 hours format. So after that, in the third argument in this uh, series, you can see that only uh, date information is given. So, so is the case in the fourth one, fifth one and the sixth one. So let's see what happens if we just execute that. I'll press uh, control enter and it will just print the date as it is. Now, what if, if you want to convert into a consistent format, again, the same function to underscore date time and pass the argument as date time, the object that we created here, for example. So once we do that, it has converted all the dates into 24 hour format. As you can see, the first one is here, 1430. Same is the case with second one, 1430. Third one, since nothing was specified, so it's basically the midnight 12 a.m. 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 that has been given to all the four dates which did not have any time stamp attached to it. All right, let's move ahead. Now let's say in your dates or in some countries, days are coming first. So in that case, what you can do is you can specify one of the parameter which is day first and say that it is true because this particular two can be day or can be month. Now it is the subject matter expert into of that data, which can really tell, uh, you know, whether it is a day or a month information. So if it is a case that it is a day, then you can execute this by using the parameter day first. So if I go ahead and execute this, what it is doing this, so it is converting into its uh, default format where here, then the month information is coming 09 and then the day information is coming. After this, let's look at the custom date and time format. So here the date has been given into a custom format where 
month and day information is being separated with the tilt uh, parameter over here. So what we can do is use the format parameter of two underscore date time to specify what format our date is having. So in this case, we have given the notation as percentage Y to indicate year, then the separator as tilt, and then the month as percentage M, again the separator as tilt, and then the day information with the percentage D. So if we execute this, it will give us the timestamp in a default format for our need. All right, let's look at a couple of other examples. So we have uh, some invalid dates. So for example, here in this case, first date is fine, second date is fine, but third is basically one, two, three. So let's see what happens once we have some invalid dates like this. So if I go ahead and execute that, it throws an error, as you can see. And down there, if I see the message, given date string not likely a date time. This particular piece I am reading. All right. So what we can do is we can use the error parameter. Either we can ignore or we can coerce. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we ignore the error. So it executed it and taken the parameter as it is like one, two, three. But if we coerce this, let's see that what happens. If we do that, it converts it an AT, which I read it as not a time. All right. The last piece is uh, from the Unix machines, we get the epoch time. And if such a case with your data sets, then you would like to convert into a proper date and time format for your analysis. So here we have an example of epoch time, a basic uh, example that I have taken, just to created one, you know, value or one variable based out of it and passed it to a two underscore date time. And I have said that unit is equals to S. That means in seconds. So if I go ahead and execute that, it will show you the date along with the timestamp until the second zero four based on my unit that I have specified. If I want in millisecond, so I have a little bit bigger, you know, date time string and mentioned as epoch underscore time underscore in millisecond. And now the unit that I'm passing is the millisecond. So here in such case, if I go ahead, it will show us the millisecond information as well, along with the date time step. So these are some of the uh, regularly used parameters that I have uh, as an example for you. I hope it was useful to you and I'll meet you in the new video with a new topic.